Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to build this miter saw fence with built-in Sturrett rule um, and a sliding stop. So the idea is you walk up to your miter saw, you don't want to get your tape measure out of your pocket. I need a piece that's 10 inches. I'm going to slide that block to 10 inches. I'm going to tighten it down. I'm going to take my piece, stick it in here, make my cut. Whenever I pull that piece out, it is 10 inches. I did not touch a tape measure. This just makes things faster. Um, you're not fumbling over your tape measure. You're not making a mark on the piece and trying to line it up in the saw. You put it in there, you make your cut, it's 10 inches. End of story. This is a, a shop made uh, uh, system. Um, minimal hardware that I actually had to purchase. I used scrap material for most of the project. Um, I think I bought some nuts and some bolts. Um, this, uh, this five star lock nut. And the stare at rule, which is really nice, it's a, it's a metal rule, and it's going to hold up for a long time. I'll have links to all of the hardware I used in the description below. I think I've got like, I don't know, I haven't totaled it up, like 20 bucks in this? You can't beat that. I mean, how can you really make improvements to your shop for $20? This is a good project, so stick around, let's work some wood. So I'm going to start the project off here uh, ripping down uh, some 3 quarter inch plywood and a piece of MDF. The MDF is going to be the base and the plywood will be the, uh, the fence actually. These are support blocks um, that will uh, hold the uh, plywood to the uh, MDF in a 90 degree fashion. And this is me uh, playing some, some Zelda with the uh, little cutoffs. Fun, fun. So now I've got my blocks here. Um, see, I've got the MDF piece down on the bench there. And then I've got a three-quarter inch plywood, uh, which is kind of like the sub fence. And then another piece of three-quarter that goes over the top of that that actually slides back and forth to give me a little bit of a... Uh, correction if I'm not exactly uh, at zero from my uh, miter saw. It'll make more sense here in a, in a minute. <clears throat> here I'm making uh, some slots in the uh, MDF base. Um, there'll be a bolt that goes through these slots and it will bolt down into the bench. These slots are going to let me kind of move the fence um, forward and back kind of in like the Y axis uh, to align it to the fence of my miter saw. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the plywood sub fence, but, uh, but these slots will go um, horizontally along the length of the plywood. And this is going to let me move the fence uh, left to right to actually align the, uh, align the uh, tape measure of my fence to the uh, miter saw itself. So there will be a slot there, uh, clean it up with the rasp, and then cut a second slot on the other end. So there will be two bolts that holds, this, uh, that holds the sub fence to the fence. And uh, I'm just using, uh, you, could, you could definitely use a router for this, a router and an edge guide would probably be better. I guess maybe I was just being lazy and didn't want to get the router out and set up the edge guide. So this works. It doesn't have to be beautiful. You know, this is uh, shop stuff. So and here I'm attaching the, uh, the angle blocks to the MDF base. I think they're spaced out about every 14 inches or so. Let's just kind of give it, uh, give it a little bit of a structural integrity and to keep everything nice and square. I think that uh, glue and brad nails for something like this is perfectly fine. I don't think that stuff like this really needs to be clamped. I think the brad nails hold it well enough until the glue dries. Um, you could certainly, you know, cut dados in for every one of those and make it really structurally uh, sound, but uh, I think this is fine. So once I've got that on, I'll come through and uh, put the, uh, the plywood subface on there, and we'll have the... Uh, 
kind of the carcass of the fence. Checking it for straight, it looks good. <clears throat> and uh, this is some quarter inch pre-finished plywood. It's going to act as the, uh, it's it's gonna rise uh, up the, uh, the, the fence so that my bolts can actually slide in the void. Um, it'll all make more sense as it goes on here. Um, but basically there's, uh, there's two pieces here. And this will kind of give you an idea. So those bolts slide in between the plywood and uh, that plywood gives the head of the bolt kind of a void to slide in. This is some uh, some red oak that I had laying around. Um, I needed some kind of hardwood for the face of the fence, uh, just for durability. So I'm going to rip that piece out, and then I'm going to resaw it down. Um, turn that piece into two pieces. And that's going to be uh, my actual fence. So we'll resaw it there, and now we'll take that uh, same oak and run it through the planter. You could definitely do this poplar. I, I think oaks maybe a bit much, but that's what I had laying around. I wanted something solid, uh, some kind of hardwood. Uh, definitely don't want pine for, for this. All right, so... Um, Yep, one of those pieces has to be narrower than the other. <clears throat> so putting the uh, plywood on there, and then the oak goes on top of the plywood. And the oak is just a little bit wider than the plywood. I think like an eighth of an inch. And that traps the uh, traps the nut down in there, so the, the head is trapped down in there. <clears throat> so I'll start by putting one piece of plywood on the uh, uh, main, one piece of the quarter inch plywood on the three quarter inch plywood fence and then I've got that little spacer there and there's actually some green tape there um, just to kind of widen it out a little bit to give that nut some move, movement and I'm just using that to uh, hold my plywood apart now the oak goes on top of that like I said that oak's just a little bit wider than the plywood so it so it traps the nut in there it makes a makes a t-slot so there we go now I'm uh, transferring the marks from my slotted holes and uh, I'm using these uh, these threaded inserts um, for my bolt to thread into. <clears throat> kind of get an idea what it looks like there. It's a little brass piece. It's threaded on the inside and threaded on the outside. So I'm taking my plywood fence there and drilling a hole for that threaded insert to go into. Now I'll uh, put a couple of nuts on a bolt and use that to uh, twist it in there. Using a wrench to, to tighten it into the hole there. And then you pull the bolt out, now you've got a threaded, threaded insert in, in wood. Works pretty good. So once those are, uh, once those are threaded in there, I can uh, clean them up a little bit there and put them on and give them a shot put my, uh, my bolts through there and that holds the holds the fence to the uh, sub assembly so so I can slide it back and forth there that's gonna let me adjust make sure my tape measure is exactly in line now I'm gonna transfer the slotted holes to uh, to the bench where it's gonna get mounted and oh cabinets in the way so yeah this is a uh, fun packed hour unloading these cabinets and uh, taking them down because I couldn't get my drill in there to drill the hole where it needed to go nothing like an hour of time in the shop wasted taking cabinets down that are full of crap There's one there's two. Okay, I'm using a piece of walnut there with a with a hole drilled through it to keep my drill uh, perfectly perpendicular. 
then I'll use uh, the, the bolt trick to, to put those threaded inserts into my plywood top there. And then I've got two nice threaded holes. fence up there and put the bolts in to bolt it down. And now I use a straight edge here to line everything up. Once I got them good I tighten the bolts down. There's a little bit of back and forth on this and as I would tighten the bolts it would move a little bit so it took a second to get everything totally in line but well worth the time to, to line that up. Uh, here I've got to go. Uh, this is actually the block that's going to slide on the fence. And I decided to put a walnut runner in this uh, block that would that would travel in that uh, T-slot for the fence. Just to kind of help, help uh, keep it nice and square and uh, keep everything moving nicely. So there's my runner. And now I'm just going to uh, make a couple of passes in this uh, block uh, for that runner to go inside of, just making a, a dado. Got the got the runner in there and we'll glue the runner into that slot I cut. You notice there's an extra slot there where I screwed up. No big deal. I'll clamp that runner in, come in the next day, and it slides nicely. So now it's time for the uh, star nut. So I'm gonna cut a notch out of that uh, runner uh, for the nut of the uh, bolt to, to go in. Just a uh, couple of cuts of the hand saws, a little clean up with the chisel, and there you go. Now we've got to drill a hole through that block for the, uh, for the nut to go through. Let's go do that. There we go. The nut in there, it slides in. Perfect. Very nice. So now I'll tighten that down and I'll cut my piece and, uh, Unfortunately, you didn't get to see me put the tape on there. My uh, camera died. But uh, it's just peel and stick tape measure. It's when You didn't miss anything too exciting. You just peel it off and you stick it on. No big deal. Um, so now I'm just uh, I'm moving the, the fence left to right just a little bit, just dialing it in, calibrating, getting it, getting it perfect. So whenever I set up that block at three inches, it's three inches. And here we go. Get the old dial calipers out, uh, just for good measure, no pun intended. Let's see where we're at, it looked good on the tape measure. I don't know if you can see it here, but I'm within about, about eight one thousandths of an inch. And that is good enough for a wood shop. No sense in chasing rabbits. Hope you guys enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.